Believe it or believe it, I'm actually a huge fan of VR, and over the years, fellas, I've subjected myself to countless nauseating sessions of VR gaming in hopes that one day, the hardware will finally be good enough to take those few minutes of sheer gaming bliss, flanked by agonizing hours of frustration and user hostility, and turn it into a no-hassle good time. Well, today we're gonna be taking a look at the first PC VR headset I've ever seen that at least on paper might be good enough to do just that with the Pimax Crystal Lite, a weight and cost reduced version of the older Pimax Crystal aiming to grab the market when it's not looking. Now, the reason why I was really interested in the Crystal Lite is not only does it have an incredibly high 2880 by 2080 resolution per eye, eliminating the screen door effect of much older headsets, I was so sick of seeing a much faster 120 hertz refresh rate, clear glass aspheric lenses promising less distortion and mini LED backlights for far higher contrast. But depending on the model you get, these specs can either be had for around $900 or $700 sans local dimming, including inside out tracking and controllers. And that might sound like a lot, but fellas, you gotta consider specs like these are typically well in excess of $1,000. And while there are some entry level options coming from companies like Meta, well, they just aren't gonna give you the visuals that this can. So all in all, it's actually a really excellent price in my opinion for these specs. And the really interesting part is that you can even upgrade it to base station tracking for more accurate results. And when you consider those specs, well, there's just really nothing else like it on the market, offering such high quality and immersive picture for under a thousand dollars, making good VR finally accessible. But as great as that sounds, well, what really makes or breaks VR is the software. And that's why I reached out to Pimax, who sent me a loaner unit for this review. And guys, this is a labor of love because I know I'm usually doing monitor or TV reviews, but hey, every now and then I gotta take a look at something that I really find interesting. And this is one of them. So I'd really appreciate if you'd put in the comments below whether or not you're interested in VR, if you've ever tried VR, and also to hit the like button and share it with your friends. But let's jump into it. Now, unlike most traditional monitors, setup time is extremely important. And let me tell you, that has been a huge problem in the past. Thankfully here, Pimax is pretty much nailing it with around 30 minutes for me to get it working out of the box, which might sound like a lot, but remember, I'm downloading the software, taking it out, throwing it down the stairs. Uh, no, I'm not doing that. But after I learned how to put a square peg in a round hole, new sessions were essentially instant as all I had to do was turn on my PC, put on the headset and bang, I'm ready for VR adult content, I mean games, games. And speaking of gaming, my first impressions booting up the game Pavlov on this headset is a much better experience than wireless as the whole thing was relatively seamless and there was no dropouts, lag or pixelated imagery at all. And that has been another huge breaking point for me when it comes to using stuff like the Quest. As much as I love the portability of those things, I throw it on and there are just some games that look awful and feel awful on those headsets. I just can't get into them when it comes to PC VR gaming. Now maybe running games on it locally can be a much better experience, but PC VR gaming on those headsets has not been good for me personally, though I do hear some people really love them. Also, I have to say, at least visually, the Pimax Crystal Light is far and away the best experience I've had with VR as of now. The clarity is much higher than any other headset I've tried, and while the edge-to-edge -edge clarity wasn't perfect, it's a huge step up than many older headsets I've tried where I feel like I'm just looking through Vaseline. And I would say it's just behind the Quest 3 or Quest Pro pancake lenses that in my opinion, are the best in that category. Being able to see digital worlds in 3D at such a high resolution is definitely an experience unlike anything I've had before, and the brightness, color, and contrast were also excellent. Nothing looked under or oversaturated. I never felt like it was way too dim, though of course there's always room for improvement, especially in HDR for VR in general. And the contrast is light years ahead of regular LCD headsets, allowing for true deep shadows in games, making it far more realistic and intense. Though unfortunately, there just aren't enough zones. And so there is gonna be some pretty significant blooming when a bright object is used in a dark area, which may be annoying to some and was definitely bizarre at times. So hopefully future models are OLED to improve the contrast even more. All in all, the visual experience is really excellent. The comfort is actually pretty good as well, despite the large size and 
more weight than I'd like. Personally, seriously, Pimax, you've got to make your headset smaller for more active games. Though, yes, that being said, it was pretty comfortable, at least for, you know, one to three hours, maybe after two to three hours, depending on who you are, it'll get a bit uncomfortable, so keep that in mind. But considering the price for sim games, this is an easy recommendation over any other headset that comes to mind. And I'd love to end the review there. But, but, as always, VR's biggest problem is the software. And here, yes, it strikes again. Now, Pimax has been making great progress towards squashing any bugs me and others bring up, so credit where it's due. But there's two really major issues that they just seem to not be able to fix. One, the headset when set on the ground will sometimes just forget where your play boundary is. And sure, you can reset it real quickly and relaunch the game, but after the 20th time, this problem is absolutely infuriating. And for the love of God, Pimax, this absolutely must be resolved or customers are gonna be returning headsets. I mean, VR is never going to take off until both the hardware and software is excellent and little things like this that annoy customers will absolutely push them away. And then two, the controller tracking, I'll be honest guys, it's just not that good. At first I thought it was fine as honestly nearly every headset I've used has had pretty mediocre tracking at best, but I think this is one of those things that the VR market absolutely must get down or VR is just never gonna take off. I mean, take a look at this footage I captured. When the PC starts experiencing any significant strain, there are times where the tracking just stutters like crazy. And guys, I'm using a 7800X 3D. This is pretty much the best CPU, at least I guess the 9800X 3D is out now, but at the time, this was the best CPU you could get for VR gaming essentially. So that's just wild. And it just never felt as smooth as the headset when I was moving that around, which is very off-putting. It almost felt like it was moving at like half the frame rate of the headset, which constantly would take me out of the game when I see my hands jittering across the screen, trying to line something up. And while we're at it, frankly, the FOV is just way too low as well. It's almost like looking through two rolls of toilet paper, though to be fair, I feel this way for pretty much every VR headset I've tried. So overall, do I recommend this headset? Well, again, if you're gonna be playing sim games with a wheel or flight stick, absolutely, you're gonna have a great time and the value on display here is just unbeatable. And I'll have an affiliate link in the description below if you wanna see what's likely to be one of the best looking PC VR headsets I can think of right now, but if you're someone who wants to play games that heavily use controllers, I just can't recommend this headset. And while I feel like Pimax is headed in the right direction, and I can't wait to see their upcoming headsets, VR as a whole really needs to improve on tracking, weight, and accessibility before it goes mainstream, which is why for me personally, I'm gonna wait just a bit longer before buying any new headsets.